American and uh, coming up at 1:30, we're going to uh, delay the stooge a little bit because Brian Gill's good friend Chris Smitherman is going to be here to talk about the one o'clock news conference happening right about now. City Hall, the streetcar named Desire, may be rolling on 2015, so we're going to see what happens. This is the biggest boondoggle since our subway system, and that's going to be at 1:30. The stooge at 1:45. George Vogel, and then we have on Leslie Giz as is about to assume the role of a judge. This could be one of her last appearances with me. But until then, our desperate, bankrupt nation, our desperate, bankrupt nation by Jerry Robinson. And uh, he says that as 2013 dawns, America remains awash in debt with no signs of slowing its massive spending every week. Our nation spends $4 billion to prop up its war machine in the mountains of Afghanistan we uh, cough up another $4 billion every week in interest payments on our gargantuan national debt. We owe about $16.5 trillion, and it's going higher and higher and higher. And what does it mean for you in a concrete way? Jerry Robinson, welcome to the Bill Cunningham Show. Jerry, how are you? Um, great, great to be here. Thank you so much. Talk about the uh, general macro sense. If you live in Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana, Florida, New York, Colorado, if you live in New Mexico, California, why do you care about the national debt? You should because in the end, it's all of our problem. You know, these politicians have racked up a lot of spending, and in essence, what much of this spending has been for has been for what they call national security. It's what they call, uh, you know, of course, the social safety net. And at some point, the creditors who are willing to loan this insane government this money, they give up, uh, especially – when you think about the interest rates being as low as they are. So as we move forward, in essence, what this is going to mean to the man on the street is that these days of low interest rates, they're going to be going away. We don't have a time frame. We don't know exactly when that's going to happen. But when it does, it's going to be pretty severe. That's why in the book Bankruptcy of Our Nation, we talk about the importance of making sure that any kind of debt that you have is put on a fixed rate. Anything variable or adjustable is going to get slammed in the next few years. When do you think, because when I read all the stuff that I like to read, it appears to be sometime in 2014 or 2015 uh, when all hell is going to break loose with interest rates. Do you buy that because the Fed the rest of this year is going to keep pumping it up? The 10-year remains down. Do, do people have at least the next six months to nine months to refinance? Yeah, I think so. I think that's a good way to look at it. I think that 2014, 2015 would be a logical place to go. Uh, many people have, were saying 2012, you know, back in 2008. So, you know, there's, it's always just a little further down the road. What's really interesting about all of this is that the United States is so completely powerful in the world economy. And it's been very surprising to many of the, uh, you know, many of the pessimists on the economy. They've been really surprised that the dollar has remained uh, in the position that it has. And the reason that it has is because of the petrodollar system. Very briefly, all that is is the fact that all oil denominate, is denominated in U.S. dollars. So there's an artificial demand all around the globe for U.S. dollars, and therefore that gives the Fed a permission slip to print. So we're kind of like so, the tallest midget in the room. We're right. not very good, but let's really face it. Japan is shorter. Europe is shorter. Africa economically doesn't exist. The Russians aren't doing well, so we're the tallest midget. We are the tallest midget, and until we uh, until we lose that title, you know, we get to enjoy the benefits of it. So you would and tell people to pay off debts individually, pay off debts, and if you have a home and you have a mortgage, this is the year to make sure it's long term. Oh my gosh, yeah, absolutely, get it on a fixed interest rate. And it was very interesting back in 2006. I was alerted that the uh, U.S. government had stopped putting student loans on fixed rates. For a long time, that was their policy. They're adjustable now. So many students who are subprime, subprime buyers or borrowers uh, need to be very cautious also and try to get their loans on a fixed rate. 
And what we talk about in the book, Bankruptcy of Our Nation, is not just paying off debt. There's a, that's a small component of it. What we also talk about is how to position your investments. We mentioned something in the book called PACE. It's something we've developed. Precious metals, agriculture, commodities, and energy. Let me write this down. P A C E. So P A C E. Precious metals. Uh huh. Uh, agriculture, which is dirt. Right. God ain't making any more dirt. No, he's not. Uh, C is commodities. Commodities, which are corn, all that kind of stuff. People. Right. Uh, uh, what? And then and then energy, which is natural gas and. Gas and all that kind of stuff, oil. Nuclear and oil and every, all of that. So those four areas traditionally have outperformed the overall market in times of monetary crisis like the times we're in now. We go into great detail about how to invest in those areas in our book, Bankruptcy of Our Nation. And then we also talk about, and this is probably the funnest part you know, for many people, is to develop multiple streams of income. There's been reports coming out this week about how many people are just one paycheck away from disaster. In fact, nearly half of Americans don't have more than $500 in savings. 44% of American households don't have enough savings to cover their basic expenses for three months if they have a financial emergency. And so what we're faced with is a nation that is very dependent upon a paycheck. And if that paycheck goes away, well, they're in danger. So we talk about the importance of creating and developing multiple streams of income. In the book, we list 21 different income streams that anyone can create both now and in retirement. Now, this is important. And also, something I've read that the net, the net worth of the average American, because of the collapse of home market values, and many people get out of the stock market, even though it's near its all-time high, let's face it, many people got out. You're saying 44% of American adults don't have enough money to go three months. To go three months. That's the latest report. Absolutely. Wow. And, you know, speaking of net worths, um, when we take a look, this is a staggering statistic that we put actually in that article that you're referencing, Our Desperate Bankrupt Nation. Uh, and people can read that on our website at followthemoneydaily.com. But we put a, a very interesting statistic in there that we discovered. Uh, the six remaining or surviving heirs of Sam Walton, those six people from the Walton fortune, the Walmart fortune, their net worth is greater than the bottom 100 million Americans combined. Man! <laughs> That's what? unbelievable. I mean, you, you, you hear that, and what that tells you is it, it, it really shows you the fact that Americans have really been, um, been, they have been taught their financial lessons and education from corporations, from the merchants, from the advertisers. They've been taught this by the financial institutions. The people who make a lot of money in this country are the producers. But, they, but the producers teach us to consume. So we go greatly into the book, Bankruptcy of Our Nation. We talk about how to think like a producer and less like just a consumer. You know, six Walmart heirs have more net worth than 100 million Americans. That's correct. Unbelievable. It's astonishing. Well, well It's unbelievable. And, and going forward, I, I see, Jerry Robinson, I, I see America, in a sense, separating. The middle class, which was the creation of the late 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s, is contracting. And there's many going down and down and down, and a few going up and up and up because achievement is difficult. Success is very hard. And when I read in the Wall Street Journal that the next great bubble is student loan debt north of $1 trillion, it concerns me long-term growth because if there's not – Literally tens of millions of middle-class Americans buying the television sets, taking the vacations, buying or leasing the brand-new cars, going out to eat on a regular basis. There's not going to be a robust, full economy for people like my producer, Brian Gill, to participate in because there's a rush toward the bottom because of productivity and the fact that one person can now do three jobs. And there's also a, a dribbling effect to the top of high-achieving individuals who have figured out, have figured out how the whole thing works. Do you see a contracting middle class and a growing underclass? Absolutely. And but of course, you know, we we really focus on application. So if that's the case, how does your listener actually benefit from that? It's a tragic thing to hear. A tragic thing that's going to happen. But here's how many people are, are uh, taking advantage of that opportunity. It really is an opportunity because, remember, in the Great Depression, more millionaires were made than at any other time. So in time, it, cash is king at the crash. People have got to have cash. They've got to develop 
uh, savings. They've got to have liquidity. But what many people are doing is they see this tidal wave coming towards those with student loans. They see this tidal wave coming with interest rates going up. You add all this stuff up, and here's the strategy. You go out. You find an area that's not overinflated with real estate prices. That's what we recently did. We moved to the Ozark Mountains out in Arkansas because the prices here for real estate are very, very, very cheap. And we're buying up real estate at fixed interest rates. And what we're going to do is rent those properties out at those fixed interest rates. And so as people, their student loans become too problematic, they lose their good credit, whatever the case might be, they won't be able to go get a home. So those who are buying up property right now at fixed interest rates, they're going to be very happy five, six, seven years down the road because rents are going to continue to rise just as everything else will because of these terrible monetary policies coming out of the Federal Reserve. Could something change? I mean, I'm thinking to myself, I'm always the eternal optimist. I can recall as a very young man in the 70s how bad it was with the gas lines, mortgage interest rates 16%, jobs were evaporating, it was terrible. In, in the early 1980s, similar things went on in the first few years of the Reagan administration. Things were tough at 01, 02 when the, when the towers fell and the economy crashed and the market won. And, and I'm thinking to myself, we recovered from all that. Why is this time different? This time is different because we have, we have gone too far, uh, in essence. The, in those times past, there never really was another nation that was on a level playing field with the United States. Uh, back in World War II, of course, you know, we were the primary uh, country coming out of that era. But now as we move forward, we have a lot of competitors on the rise, and they're developing their own currencies. And we, re we reference something else that we talk about in our book, Bankruptcy of Our Nation. We talk about this idea of the petrodollar system. That is the linchpin. That is the, that is the system that breaks down the dollar. That is the single thing that could actually collapse our economy. Because if other nations like China, like Russia, and like Iran, uh, they're moving away from using dollars for their oil purchases and transactions, that lowers the demand for dollars. And if you lower the demand for dollars, then you have to lower the supply of dollars. And that's how our country is surviving right now, by pumping out, spitting out $3 billion a day out of the Fed just to keep this thing afloat. So if we lose our permission slip to print more money, there's no right. way to keep the thing afloat. And, and according to Bernanke, he said through 2014, so we have another year, year and a half of this. Uh, the printing presses are, are enlarging the uh, currency and therefore deflating the value over the long term because if there's more dollars out there, each one is worth less. And if each dollar is worth less, when you buy a commodity or buy a gallon of gasoline, it takes more dollars to buy the gallon because each dollar is worth less, so you got to pay more. And that brings us right back to the idea, what we talk about in our book, uh, the PACE concept. We talk about different ideas for investing in precious metals, agriculture, commodities, energy. All of these things have soared over the last 10 years, and we believe the next 10 years is going to be another transfer of wealth again as people begin to move out of paper assets and they begin to move to hard assets. You know, the, the latest numbers we saw about the, uh, the U.S. Mint, we saw Americans buy nearly half a billion dollars in gold and silver in January. That right. is staggering. That is more than the entire year of 2007, in the first week of 2013. So why is all of this gold, why is all of this silver all of a sudden being sold? The truth is that people are waking up, and when these things happen, they happen quickly. Lastly, if you are stuck right now, if you have few savings, if any, if your job is iffy, if your credit cards are now maxed out, you're, Jerry Robbins, you're talking about planning in the next five or ten years. There are millions and millions and millions of Americans that are stuck right now in jobs that don't pay enough money with taxes going up, with their medical insurance premiums going up, despite the promises of Obama they'd be cut in half when he, uh, Obamacare was enacted. It's going the opposite direction. Companies are dropping you, and, and, uh, and you're stuck with credit card debt. That the plan, what do you say to that person, to that woman or that man to get out of the situation in which they find themselves? We have actually, that's our specialty. We have focused on helping those people for the last several years here at our organization. What we would say to that person, and this may sound self-serving to us, but it really is the case of how someone would do it. You turn the TV off, and you go out and you get a copy of our book, Bankruptcy of Our Nation, and you turn to the chapter that lists 21 income streams that you can create both now and in retirement. 
you thumb through those and you pick out one and you start developing that second stream of income. And when you're done with that one, you go to the, no, to the next one and you build a third stream of income. You know, my wife and I have been able to develop 17 streams of income and most of them are passive. And the reason that that's so good is that if I lose five income streams tomorrow, I'm not worried. I'm not up at night pulling out my hair saying, how am I going to pay my bills? The average American has one income stream, maybe two if they're lucky. Mm. When they reach retirement, that number moves up to about three. We, uh, financial advisors tell us that we can have 11. And in our book, we list 21 uh, that people can create both now and in retirement. So, so Jerry Robinson, you're talking about Plan B. you got you have Plan C. you got to have a Plan B. got to have a Plan D. All right. Plan you, X, Y, Z. you got to have a different plan. But if you find yourself right now overwhelmed, you're in a job not paying you enough money, you don't have assets, you don't have things to borrow against, and you have credit card debt, you're not done, suicide is not an option, you have to get out of it, and what you got to do is, number one, stop spending, and number two, develop alternative means of income, and number three, plan, and then execute your plan. Absolutely, and remember, the people who don't have money, they have time. Now, I've heard people say, well, I don't have either, and that's not true. You have, you have one. You either have money or you have time. Now, some people... Uh, have both. That's a wonderful place to be. But for the most part, most people either have money or they have time. If you have time, that's fine. You can use that. That's your currency. If you have money, you want time. And so you can use that money to, to make more money for yourself and create time. Now, last sure. Jerry, I, I, want to, I want one more. Area. We only have about a minute sure. left. How come the economy is so bad and the debts are so high of the nation, $16.5 trillion going to $20 trillion, Yet the stock market is at all-time highs. How's, the, how's all those events happening at the same time? It is because the Federal Reserve is pumping in $3 billion per day. That's, B, that's billion with a B, $3 billion per day. Think about this. If, if we live in an economy where there are $10 and that's it, nothing can cost more than $10 in our economy. But if we all of a sudden inject a $1 billion into the economy, now something can cost up to a billion. Well, Asset prices can only rise when there is more money inside the economy or something about the supply-demand factor changes. Yeah. Nothing is changing with the stock market. It's the fact that money is being pumped in, and it's causing these stocks to rise. So it's enjoyable while it lasts, but this does not end well. And in our book, Bankruptcy of Our Nation, we explain exactly how we believe it will end. We give strategies for people to use. All right, Jerry Robinson, we got to go. You've been a fountain of good information, and I wish you and yours nothing but the best as we proceed through 2013. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Jerry Robinson, Bankruptcy of Our Nation. Let's continue with more in about five minutes. I'm going to have on Chris Smitherman about the latest from the mayor and from the city manager about the streetcar named Desire. Then at 145, The Stooge. At 245, of course, Leslie Giz with her final appearance. She's about to become a judge and more on News Radio 700 WLW.